Happy Father's Day. Dad, I love you. I'm here because of you, so thank you. Today's vlog is brought to you by Lincoln Welding. Recently did this barbecue pit made with the new Lincoln MP140. It's a great welder. We're using it, five of them going right now in the class that's going on right now this weekend in my house. Having a great time. If you're at all interested in picking one up for Dad for Father's Day, there's a link in the description. Go check it out. Thank you, Lincoln. A couple of recent projects, this barbecue, this video's blowing up, so thank you all very much for sharing it and showing it around. I wanted to do an Argentine barbecue, and I ended up doing a different scissor lift barbecue. Got the idea from looking at my scissor lift in my barn, and came together really, really just as I worked. I started making the video, and then I got the idea for the scissor lift thing, so pretty amazing. You just gotta jump into a project sometimes. Don't overthink it, just jump into it and then you can always make it again once you know exactly what you want to do. Another video I did that hasn't been published yet is this table with the logo inserted into the table. This was a rush job. This video is currently on my Patreon. I'm just waiting for the client to give me the okay to publish the video. It was a little bit of anxiety for me because I had never done this procedure with the CNC making the pocket and putting the inlay into it, clamping it, and then sanding away after the glue dry but it worked out perfectly. This is where you learn. These are the moments where you learn where you put yourself under pressure. So it worked out really good for me. Client seems to be very happy with it. And now I know how to do something new. Sorry I haven't been around for a while. I just kind of needed a break from the vlogs. I haven't done one since I went to California. And I went to California to do the TV show making it. Season two, it's gonna be out sometime after the summer. It was a great, great shoot. I had a lot of fun. I had a chance to hang out with Nick Offerman. He's always fun to hang out with, there's no doubt. And while I was in California, I got a chance to hang out with my brother John. And here's just some fun times hanging out with my brother John. Okay. Is there anything you can do to reduce income tax and more? If these questions are on your advisor today to talk about What's going on? Questions and concerns. I'm about to ask my stomach. Wait a minute. Somebody bite your logo. My name too. It's <laughs> alright with me. This was made out of scrap wood yesterday. Black and blue. It's cool. Yeah. I like the offset. That's cool. All right, so this is what we call a tiny bit rustic. I rent a little space up there. This has been 25 years of someone that's collecting. I mean, look at this stuff. It's turned upside down, inside out. Look at that. My hair is on fleek. Nice. You want to touch it? This was a really nice shop with natural sun, all the right electric. And we had a guy here named Oscar. And Where are you now? Uh, now he works at an upholstery place, which I went to ask him a question about five, uh, four years ago. And I walked in and there was Oscar and we had a big reunion. It was really nice. <laughs> if you want to move out here, this is your shop right here. How come you guys don't make it your shop? Uh, we just were like, we're, we're over there and we like it. And believe it or not, it's a closer walk to the street when you make big things. <laughs> crab fishing. Yeah, jacking for crabs. Okay, here we go. And back in that corner, I don't even know if we can get there, is some band, I think there's a couple of bandsaws. This is a bandsaw, I didn't know. There you go. Oh, look at Who that. Who wins? I guess my oh. bandsaw is bigger than yours. Mine's bigger than that. Do you know that what, what year that is? That looks, that is? based on the knobs, it looks like a craftsman. So, but, you know, they would never make this anymore. The craftsman makes like hand house tools. But I was looking at this, this also kind of reminds me of a craftsman style with like the red thing, even though it looks kind of the same all the time, but has a very specific look. This is just mental illness. That's what this is. This isn't a collection. My newest headshot was taken in this chair, so that has a little bit of a sentimental value. You better get it before the fire. Don't keep your life savings in a box here. I keep my life savings in my front left pocket. Imagine letting your 10 year old, your two year old, your three year old play with that. Yeah, they get tetanus, get yeah. a cut. The yeah. dick falls off. That's it. Here. Yeah, if she cleared this place out, it would be a great resource. Yeah, there's another one right in here. You missed this whole area. 
I said, this is crazy. When we got here, it was so cleared out that we were going to rent this for storage. Right here, it was four walls, not a single thing. No, it's full. I would stain these and it makes them look older, makes them look vintage. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when I stain them, they lift the paint up and turn it into mush. Stain them first. I never thought of that. I guess that you did help me. <laughs> I love saying your mom so much that uh, Jimmy doesn't know the reason I wear this scarf all the time. Yeah, why? I got a tattoo right here on my neck, says your mom. Can you show it? It's infected. If you listen to the Fits All podcast, you know I bought this bandsaw from a guy on Craigslist in the valley in California near my brother's. It's parked at my brother's place right now. I'm hoping he's going to wrap it up and put it on a pallet and get it here to New York. I'm hoping. John, are you listening? <laughs> Got to hang out with my brother John quite a bit. We spent some time at the flea market. This is my brother's friend, Neil, at the flea market in California. So you used to be a paparazzi. Paparazzi? What are some of your famous photographs? Uh, Jennifer Aniston with John Mayer making out on the beach in Miami. How'd you get that? Were you hiding in that picnic basket? Was, I was across the street, actually. I was a quarter mile away with an 800 millimeter lens with a 2X converter. How did you know they were there? You pay people. You get the tip. How much did that, that photograph sell for, if you can say? I know it was a different time and place. 80000 Really, for that one photograph? It was for multiple publications, but over time it went, I got 80 grand out of it. I had a lot of Lindsay Lohan, Jessica Simpson, yeah. uh, Nicole Richie. Right on. There, it was like a friggin' flock of uh, bad seagulls out there every night. There was somebody out there. It was like a tag team. Okay, your turn to go do something stupid. And what, what, Paris Hilton. What stopped it? Like, what, what caused it to go away? This. No kidding. Social media and the iPhone? Yeah. When I was working for People Magazine, there were at six and a half million copies a week. Now they're under 600,000. The picture I would get $1,500 for is now going for 50 bucks, if it's, if it's exclusive. What if somebody puts an interesting picture up on social media and say People Magazine wants to grab it, can they just take it? Or do they, since somebody well, already well, published it? If you put it on social media, they own it. You don't own it anymore. That's what happened with Ellen DeGeneres. She was putting a lot of stuff on Instagram and Twitter, and then they would take her picture and publish it in magazines and she's like hey wait a second and because it said the byline it said instagram right or it said twitter and so she stopped doing that supposedly instagram or twitter then would get the money if they were right. able to republish it in people well, they're supposed to put like whoever took the, co the photo plus right. the agency so it would right. be uh jimmy Jurasta twitter you but know, then Ashland. but then i don't get any money you're supposed to get money but it never happened. Well, my agent was uh, Phil Ramey, uh -huh. and he uh, is notorious for not paying <laughs> what he's supposed to be paying. But right. I would get 60-40 as far right. as I was supposed to get. Right. A lot of times he would give me maybe 30%, and I would never know. Do you do you still get the fever, like when, you, when you're at like a coffee shop and you happen to see somebody that you know? Is, is it over? You don't care? No, no. Well, if I have a camera with me, if I have a, a decent camera, I will try to get a shot. What's your camera of choice for a good paparazzi? Actually, Sony is really good now. Sony's going to take over. Yeah. They bought out Minolta about eight years ago. They're like two grand for a good no light camera. I mean, it's amazing. My friend shoots videos with it. I was like, where's the lights? We don't need lights. No kidding. <laughs> Just ambient light, whatever. Yeah, available. it's the Sony A3, I think it's called now. Wow. It's about 2400 bucks. I'll take you to, I'll take you over to Sammy's. I'll show you. I was above him and he was below me. <laughs> he and, had the better vantage point. Well, because he was lower because he realized that the car has, it's a Goldwing door from the, it's a Mercedes and McCullen. Right. So the doors open up and there's like, da da! You know, there's no hinge in the way. Right. So he got that. I got the low shot. He got that shot. Did he's you still, guys he's still, he's know still, what you were looking for or you just happened to get it? He didn't know what he was looking at. He, <laughs> <laughs> he's, still, he's still in therapy for that picture. <laughs> All right, that's a good ending. <laughs> that's funny.
While I was at the flea market, Nathan came to visit me. He drew me this beautiful picture of Spike on the spot. So Nathan, thank you very much. That's it, another day at the flea market. Make that email for me. When I finally got back from California, I jumped right into the knife class with my buddy Steve Pellegrino, who was the teacher. Amerobraid supplied the grinder, so thank you, Amerobraid. Many first-time knife makers did absolutely successful knives, including me. I got to learn a lot about making knives. I've been working in the dark making knives, but it's nice to have some specific instruction from somebody that really knows what he's doing. So, Steve, thank you very much. Next knife class is in September. I think we still have a couple of spaces. Well done, Jim. Sorry. Rewind. Please don't cut your hand. I got more instructions. All right. We're going to have a party with all this confetti. Yeah. Oh, my. Please don't hurt yourself. I cut my nails this way. <laughs> I right, save a piece for Instagram. Hold on. After the knife class, me and my posse, we went over to Spring Make Event in Cleveland. Lincoln put on this event called the Spring Make Event where everybody had a chance to actually do some sheet metal work, some welding, some hammering on an anvil, and it was uh, plenty of woodwork. It was great. There's a great maker scene in Cleveland, and Craig, thank you very much for putting on an excellent, an excellent event over there. Spring Make, look for Spring Make 2020. It's definitely coming up. Spring Make 19 was such a success. Got to do, got to meet some great people. Got a chance to speak on stage. Got to see some wonderful speakers. Spring Make 2020. I think everyone should go. It was pretty much non-stop right after spring make. We all got on a plane, went over to Birmingham, England. We went to Maker Central. Had a wonderful time meeting the European fans. Made a lot of new friends, met some old friends. A lot of hanging out in the lobby. Just hanging out, talking and talking and getting to know people and bonding and sharing experiences. That's the most beautiful thing about going. It's just making these friendships. Get to hang out with the samurai carpenter. This is how you grow when you travel and meet new people. Thank you to Nick Zametti for throwing spring make. And I'm not sure what's going on with Spring Make 3. Lobby Nick Zametti for Spring Make 3. So he throws Spring Make 3.
then after spring make, I got back. I had one day in New York, and then I went over to San Francisco to the Maker Fair there in San Francisco. And unfortunately, it seems like it might be the last Maker Fair because we all know the news about Maker Fair. But I really don't think Maker Fair is gone for good. It's just going to get some. It's going to take some reorganizing. It's going to take some behind the scenes think tanks to figure out what it's going to be. But I don't think Make a Fair is going to actually be gone. I think it is too much of a positive thing, too much of a good thing. And I don't think the, the, the people, uh, the audience is going to let it go. Not without a fight. So Dale, I, I think Make a Fair is, is just maybe just having a dip. I don't think it's gone for good. Caleb Kraft came up with a funny concept where I'd be on stage taking concepts from the audience and then brainstorming them out on a whiteboard. It was a lot of fun. If this video of my time on stage sounds like anything, which I haven't really reviewed, if it sounds like anything, maybe I'll make it a video for my Patreon. It was a lot of fun though. It was a lot of fun. So Caleb, thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. I got back from Make a Fair, we jumped right into the spoon making class with Tracy and Katrina. They came and taught us how to make spoons and bowls, and we got some local lumber. We got real lumber, and Nick, Tech Ed Fireman, cut up the lumber with his chainsaw. We made bowls, and that was the weekend that I made my spoon on the bandsaw, which was a lot of fun. I got a chance to use my huge new bandsaw for the first time. Patrick got it wired up while I was traveling. And that thing is killer. That thing works so well. It is just like unstoppable. Did you ever use a tool that didn't stall? It, it's like magic. So the spoon class went great, and currently, right now, we're in the middle of the welding class with Jody and JD. That's Jody from Welding Tips and Tricks and JD from Apexish Welding. They're doing such a wonderful job. Even today we had Andrew, who's like rated like the fourth or fifth TIG welder in, in the world, came and he taught some. When we put on these events, it creates an environment for people to come and share ideas and, and just hang out. And, and it was just such a great time. As of now, the welding class is a big success. We have another welding class next weekend. That one's sold out. And then in the fall, we have a few classes. And uh, upcoming events that are gonna be taking place, we have the Maker Rendezvous in September. That's gonna take place in Canada. Uh, I'm gonna have the link below. I'm gonna be there demonstrating antique printing press techniques. That's my friends at Bear Mountain Boats are throwing that. And then October 11th, the weekend of October 11th, we have an event here in my small little town up here in Eastern New York. Uh, we're throwing an event called the Catskill Maker Camp, and there'll be a link below. Catskill Maker Camp is going to be a lot of makers there. Laura's going to be there. The, the New York City Modern Forge guys are going to be there. Uh, that involves Cliff Dufton, uh, Jeff Fader and the, the knife making guys that are here on the East Coast. Um, I think Jesse Savage, the blacksmith, is gonna be there. Iron Maiden Forge, I think, is scheduled to be there. The lineup keeps growing. Take a look on their Facebook page for more information. You could write to them and ask them. Things keep evolving, so you could write to them and, and ask them directly. So Jessie Combs recently stopped by the house and spent a few days. She came over to hang out, get to know a little bit about what YouTube was all about, because we know Jessie's pretty big in the TV world, so just give us some advice about YouTube. And we just discussed ideas about television and just the future of making and sharing ideas. So here's my little interview with Jessie Combs, the fastest woman on earth. 
Here I am with the world famous Jesse Combs, race car driver, race car builder, car builder. Car builder, yeah. Car builder. How'd you get your education? Uh, I went to a school called WyoTech in Laramie, Wyoming, and I got a degree in custom automotive fabrication. So everything from collision refinishing to street rub fabrication, to high performance engines, to chassis fabrication, trim and upholstery. So I pretty much can do everything with a car. Wow. And wh how old were you when you went to that school? Uh, I was in my early 20s, believe it or not. I took about five years to figure out what I wanted to do because right. originally I was going to be interior design. Well, growing up I wanted to be an architect and then it was mm -hmm. interior design and then I was like, oh, I found so much more joy in cars and the right. the empowerment and getting it, you know, fixing things and making them go better, faster, stronger, lighter. And so right. I just kind of... Did you grow up in an environment with cars? Like no. anybody around you with cars? No, I mean, my dad was a mechanical engineer, but he was mainly on a construction site. We right. did build like a 1970 GMC pickup truck together. Oh. Oh, when I was cool. a little, little kid, but I was yeah. so little that it was like, and I'm a girl, so it's like, you know, hand them tools kind of a yeah, deal, right, and that right, was right. about it. And then my parents divorced when I was 11, so I didn't have him during those crucial years of right. growing up, you know? So right. I would say no. I didn't have that sort of influence. Yeah. I think it was just kind of in my genes. Well, that's pretty much And you also happen to hold the title as the fastest woman alive. Is that true? Fastest woman on four wheels. Well, I guess you could say fastest woman alive because, you know, unfortunately, Kitty O'Neill passed away last year. Okay. She still currently holds a record at 512 miles an hour. On four wheels? On three wheels. Three wheeled oh, wow. rocket car. Yeah, she oh set that God. back in 1976. So yeah. once I break her record, right now I'm on four wheels. Um, once I break her record, I just become the fastest woman on earth. So we are filming a documentary about that, so you'll find that coming out. Very when is soon. that? When does that happen? When, when will you do that run? Well, it's like every year we do that run. Like, we do testing all the time. Something that always goes wrong. I mean, you're dealing with a car that's got a J79 jet engine in it. It's 58 feet long. It weighs 14,000 pounds. There's a lot of things that you're still trying to work out when you're trying to convert an F-104 fighter jet into a race car. So wow. there's a lot of things that we still are up against in our you're, testing. You're scheduled phase. this summer to do another run? Yeah. Yeah, end of August. And you could potentially break the record then? Uh, potentially, yes. Wow. Yes, if everything and goes well. Yeah. How did you get that job? Did you fill out an application? <laughs> no, friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. That's basically wow. how it went. Yeah. And when it was, oh my g fuck. Maybe there's chickens. <laughs> they lay eggs on the keyboard. I don't know why they keep doing it. So what, what, what would you say to any young boy or girl out there that is in their late 20s, doesn't really know what to do, is kind of bumbling around, has a slight inclination for mechanics what would you what kind of advice would you give to anybody pick up tools find some mentors ask them every question that you possibly can yep. and just get involved I mean you 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 never know if you never try so the first thing is is that you got to get involved you got to find yep. somebody you got to find somebody you look up to go to school um, watch all of the YouTube videos that you possibly <laughs> yeah. can I, there's so much information out there these days oh, I so but I think the biggest thing is is pick up tools start learning how to use them and find a mentor that's really willing to help you right. and the other thing too is my advice to anybody watching is it's never too late there's so many people that are in their 40s 30s 50s mm -hmm. it's never too late to just pick up and start to do a new career and, yeah. I, and the one thing I found with YouTube and yeah. you probably have as well so many people get inspired by what the make community is doing mm -hmm. that they just quit their corporate job quit their day-to-day -day that they've hated at any age and then just start something new well it's you know it's really sad that everybody's going I shouldn't say everybody but the big push is to go to college 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 right. and get a university degree but not everybody is made for university. Yeah. So I don't I don't expect everybody to feel like, oh my God, I have to go to college. You can go to a tech school for a few months and get the information that you need. You can That's take it. one of your workshops and get what you need and exactly. turn that hobby into a career. So there's so many avenues that you can go into. You just have to apply yourself. Right. Yeah. And they could also tune into your YouTube channel. Well, I kind of have a YouTube channel. It's pretty <laughs> lame in comparison to yours. I think I have like some links to other videos that I do, but I've been doing automotive television for like 15 years, so there's yeah. a lot of stuff out there if you want to Google yeah. Jesse Combs or YouTube me. Hopefully I'll get my YouTube channel on it, up and running. I, I got to take time. I got to get the camera out every once in a while and <laughs> yeah, actually use it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as Instagram, it's the Jesse Combs, mm -hmm. and that's my Twitter, and that's also Facebook is Jesse Combs Official. Thanks for visiting the shop. Thanks, guys. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Lucy, come back when you're done. Lucy, just come back when you're done. I'm begging you, baby, please don't leave me. So that's it. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I had to take this long break from making vlogs, but I needed to just regroup every once in a while. You just need to take a break. So thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for putting up with me. And thank you for watching and sharing my videos. I really appreciate it. And happy Father's Day to my dad. I'll repeat it again. 
If it wasn't for my dad, I wouldn't be here in a shop like this doing the things I do. So dad, thank you and I love you.